Okay, in this question, I'll be talking uh, mainly focusing on ergonomics and anthropometrics, uh, but also discussing aesthetics because it's part of this question as well, uh, but mainly those first two. Okay, now in this particular question, you'll see it's from a past paper, so we're looking at uh, year 2016. Okay, uh, this is question eight, so it's on the legacy spec, uh, but the topics of anthropometrics and ergonomics and aesthetics even uh, come up on the new spec and they're going to remain valid. Okay, this was a 12 mark question uh, at the time, I was suggesting about 18 uh, minutes a mark. That's because if you divided out the the amount of marks you had and the amount of minutes you had, which was a, a two hour paper, it worked out around about a minute and a half a mark uh, for that particular question or all the questions on that paper. Now, if we look at this um, question first of all, the first thing we do is obviously we read the question. I suggest uh, reading it through a couple of times to make sure that you're absolutely clear with what you're doing and look for sort of command words, um, look for uh, what I like to call specification points as well, okay? So if we read through this question first, okay? So figure six, there it is, figure six is a toothbrush. Uh, using diagrams where appropriate, so we're going to highlight that because we have to use diagrams, okay, critically evaluate, we're obviously evaluating, there's our command word there, the aesthetic and ergonomic features, so there's our, what I like to call the specification, the two things in this case that we're going to talk about, features of the toothbrush. Now, as I said, at the start we talked about the diagrams there, okay, um, it says you have to use diagrams, so don't not include diagrams. Don't think you're going to get away with it by just putting text in for these sort of questions because you could seriously limit your marks in these sort of questions when it says that. Now, a lot of people might ask, well, what, what should I draw? How do I do the diagrams? In a question like this, I would probably suggest literally drawing a picture of the uh, toothbrush. If you want to go a little bit further, we can actually draw individual elements of the toothbrush. But what I'd probably do is draw a picture of the toothbrush and I'd label it up as like one, two, basically all the things that I'm talking about in the question. So then in the question, I can refer to these as figure one, figure two, and what these things show. Now, when we first approach this question, um, what I'd say is reword the question in the answer. What this does is it makes it clear that you've read it. It makes it clear uh, in your mind that you're not going off on a tangent. Okay, so it's quite um, common, I see, with students. When you get questions like this and it says to evaluate aesthetics and ergonomics, they think they've read it and then they start evaluating other factors like cost and materials and manufacturing techniques, which it might all be very good answers if that's what it was asking for. But if it's asking for specific things as in aesthetics and ergonomics that's all we want to be talking about because other points will not get us any marks to, regardless of how good or how effective our descriptions are so we read by the question I'd probably put something like this okay in this question I'll be critically evaluating the aesthetic and ergonomic features of the toothbrush I'm just literally rewording what it says up here okay now what we then want to do I would suggest again in all questions like this is to look at the product and I, what I'd do is I'd mind map maybe on a separate piece of paper if I was in an exam situation on a piece of draft paper, um, both the aesthetic points and the ergonomic points that I'm going to talk about. These could be positives, okay, so all good things. We could also think about the negatives as well because it doesn't say list the positives or list the negatives, okay, so we're evaluating, we're, we're coming up with a value judgment over what we think about all the, the, the features that we're seeing in this product over here, okay. Now when you're going through the features, what I would suggest is going through the P model, so the point evidence explanation model. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. And when you're writing an extended question like this, to try to vary your use of connectives uh, as you go through as well. Okay, so if we just skip on a little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit about ergonomics if you're, you're not sure about what these are. Incidentally, aesthetics, I think we should be quite familiar with that, but aesthetics is obviously to do with the uh, the looks of the product. So if something is, is uh, uh, positive in terms of aesthetics, you're basically saying it looks good. If it has poor aesthetics, you're, you're saying there's something uh, ugly or disturbing about the way it looks. Okay, So we'll talk about ergonomics first. Um, ergonomics basically is, is often sometimes referred to as human factors because uh, obviously it's, it's factors relating to how uh, humans or people r respond to the products and how they interact with products and things like this. Um, this is a, a definition that I've kind of taken a little bit from Wikipedia. So it says it's concerned with the understanding um, of interactions among humans and other elements of a system. Okay, I like to use the, the term kind of man-machine interface. So if you imagine that any product that you're, you're talking about in terms of ergonomics is the machine, you are the man or the woman in the, some cases obviously, um, it's your interaction with that product. So if we're talking about the toothbrush here, you interact with it a in a multitude of ways. You put the toothbrush in your mouth, you pick the toothbrush up, 
um, you look at the toothbrush, okay, you might smell the toothbrush, you might taste the toothbrush, okay, so any way that you're inter interacting or interfacing with that machine or that product in, in the question is to do with ergonomics, okay. Now, for a product to be considered uh, ergonomic, I like to think about a couple of things, okay, so I think uh, ergonomic products, what we're talking about here is products that are safe, products that are easy to use and products that are comfortable. So we've got an S, an E and a C there, okay? So to easily remember this, we can say, wait a sec, okay? We can think about ergonomics like that, okay? Because the S, the E and the C there are safety, ease of use and comfort, okay? If we remember those factors, uh, it's gonna be uh, very useful for us in an exam situation when we're coming up with a mind map and we're talking about uh, uh, the ergonomic features of any product, whether we're evaluating a toothbrush or a uh, a computer mouse or, or any product at all okay the other thing you might consider yourself with is obviously we're talking about how a person interacts with a product so we might also think about this one here this word statistics okay so ergonomics can concern um, us with a multitude of different um, uh, senses okay the senses being sight taste smell touch and sound if you put those into a uh, into order there and we put them into a word statistics there we can see that might help us to remember these things so again if we're looking at this product and we're talking about sight we might re be referring to the color or the texture of the product okay in fact texture is probably more like to do with touch um, if we're looking at the taste of the product there might be an aspect uh, an aspect of this product to do with taste so when you put it in your mouth the feel of the product in your mouth and stuff is an ergonomic factor you're interfacing with it in that way okay in terms of the smell I don't think toothbrush, toothbrushes generally smell of anything, okay, but they, it could have a, a scent to the, the product that might aid the way it's being used or something like this, okay, and obviously the sound of the product, okay, again, it's not really something that makes a sound, but perhaps when you put it into your mouth and you're brushing, uh, that, that might have some sort of, uh, you know, emotional impact on you as you're using the product as well. So all of the senses we can think about when we're talking about um, uh, any sort of product, and that will help us to build up a really detailed analysis when we're talking about ergonomics okay the other thing obviously we think about when we're talking about sort of ergonomics that goes hand in hand with it is this idea of anthropometrics okay so if we see this word anthro being used on any sort of um, uh, the, the prefix of a word or the start of a word effectively it's to do with uh, man or humans for example okay and in this case it's to do with uh, human metrics metrics being measurements okay you might know the metric system as in millimeters and things like this um, so we, we're talking about human measurements in this particular case, okay? So going back to the toothbrush as well, okay? The human measurements we're gonna have to think about is obviously our hands going around the handle, uh, our mouth size when we're putting the toothbrush in our mouth and probably a multitude of other things effectively, okay? But basically, uh, anthropometrics, here we go, we've got our definition again, it's the scientific measurements of the human body, so in this case we'd be scientifically measuring hands and mouth sizes and things um, to allow us to make ergonomic products as part of a user-centered design approach, okay? Um, if we want the product to be ergonomic, okay, we obviously have to think about these things, okay? The example I've got here, okay, in terms of anthropometrics, if we produce a chair that's not the right size or shape or it's got spikes on it effectively, it's not going to be ergonomic and it's obviously not going to fit our requirements. So if we've not taken into account the the, the user's sizes, you know, his his knee size kind of coming off here, the, the size of his, his backside effectively, where his shoulders are going to meet this thing, how big his arms are effectively when he's sitting on this chair, it's not going to make a particularly comfortable chair when we're, when we're looking at that, okay? Now, when we go back to our questions that we said, we start off by rewording the question at the start, okay, and then I'd probably consider this PEE model, okay? What I like to say to remind you about this is how do we P all over our questions? Well, the first thing we do is we come up with a point. So when we're structuring our extended question, we want to come up with our point first, okay? Here we go, one S point as uh, sorry one positive aesthetic feature I've noticed is that the toothbrush has a white gloss finish so I've made my point okay I'm then giving evidence then as to why I think that's a good thing I think this is because the color white is associated with cleanliness and hygiene and suits the aesthetics found in most modern bathrooms so I'm justifying I'm giving a reason for my point there I'm evidencing it okay example this feature is created by adding pigments to the polymer as part of the injection molding process okay you might not have to go into this 
uh, level of depth okay so it's quite often enough to kind of give a point and evidence it okay but this is additionally uh, good to show your understanding in questions and things like this okay the other thing I suggested is to vary your connectives okay so there's a load uh, of connectives that you could use to structure sentences and to link things together here's just a page there okay so you know I could go through these I'm not going to but you've got the slide there so if you want to have a little look at those I'd suggest perhaps you know having this printed out and have it uh, next to you when you're practicing questions and things like this so you don't use the same uh, connective over and over again okay I saw a lot of, see a lot of students writing a point and then they say in addition in addition in addition in addition and it gets it's a bit dry, it gets a bit boring uh, when we're talking about the uh, thing, okay? So what we're basically going to do, we reword our question there, we look at all our points in terms of our mind map and think about what we're going to talk about, and then when we're structuring our question, we put our point evidence explanation and we vary our use of connectives as we go forwards, okay? So, have a go at the question, okay? And then you can have a little look uh, in a second at the sort of things that you might want to talk about I'm going to put those on in now so if you do want to stop now and have a little go at that question you can do um, but here we go moving on to the next slide so this is some of the indicative content this is what the exam board calls it when we're sort of awarding marks and things like this this are the sort of some of the things that they come up with in terms of aesthetics and in terms of the um, uh, ergonomic features in the um, the toothbrush as well okay but again you'll, you'll probably think of a lot of these as you're going through so as we said the first one there the white gloss finish uh, gives the hygienic appearance okay we often associate in white with uh, cleanliness and hygiene and purity and stuff like that okay there's a lot of connotations with that color so you can talk about that okay the over -mold molding and main body can be changed using pigments to suit different target markets okay so the over molding what we're talking about is this bit here it's often a sort of a rubberized um, perhaps a, a a thermoplastic elastoma covering that goes over uh, another type of plastic is sometimes uh, done by over molding it's sometimes used in a dual shot injection molding per, uh, process because obviously what that's going to do is it's going to give us grip and it's going to change the color and stuff like that and obviously what we can do is we can change this for different target markets okay I don't want to be stereotypical here but the classic is that, that boys might like blue and girls might like pink or stuff like this this is very changeable now okay but effectively what what a company is going to do is they're going to research their target market there and find out what colors or designs are going to be appropriate to those particular users when they create a new product okay in terms of ergonomics we've got a lot of things that we can talk about and this is what I'm focusing on in this question so I'll go through this a bit more so we've got um, LSR TPE or TPR there so liquid silicon rubber thermoplastic elastoma thermoplastic rubbers effectively the over mold in there it gives an elastic property which means it's, it's springy in the hand okay so it gives you kind of grip and it allows uh, that to be more comfortable in the hand as well as improving grip as well okay and generally it, it probably feels a little bit nicer if you've got a product that's got a rubbery surface Surface is probably going to feel nicer in your hand okay now in terms of this the next point there the anthropometric hand size or grip diameter data has been used to design the handle of the toothbrush what we're talking about is this diameter here okay where you're going to be holding it and probably the the kind of the height part of the hand there from uh, if we're if we're looking about hand here we're talking about this kind of distance here from where the palm is effectively that where we're probably going to take this now this is a child's toothbrush so what we're going to be looking at is anthropometric data from uh, the, the set of uh, data for the the, the uh, age group or uh, life stage of that particular uh, user so in this case I don't know maybe this this goes up to 10 year olds maybe as low as um, 6 to 10 something like that okay and that's the sort of data we'll be looking at in terms of their grip diameter um, and, and other factors um, on their uh, anthropometrics um, finally as we said it's uh, shaped ergonomically to increase grip so you can see there's kind of indentations in the handle here that's going to make it less likely to slip out that combined with that um, thermoplastic elastomer uh, over molding as well is going to increase grip the handle has uh, smooth uh, edges no sharp edges there we don't want to be holding something that's probably completely square or as sharp edges even worse for example and even the the shape at the top here okay everything is smooth and rounded because obviously this is interfacing with your hand but also it's going into your mouth as well okay we could also probably talk about I don't think I've got it on here but I for completely imagine that the polymers used in this are going to be food safe as well because obviously uh, 
that's going to be uh, a useful sort of ergonomic feature in terms of safety as well. Um, here we've got LSR under the bristles will help uh, protect the gums or impact on the gums when we're brushing okay so under here there's a little bit it's very hard to see in the the picture I'm not quite sure how the exam board are expecting you to see this sort of stuff but we're assuming here there's some liquid silicone rubber uh, under there as well it's, it's more comfortable so it's not going to bruise your gums you can probably also argue that these these uh, the shaping of the actual uh, fibers itself will have slightly rounded edges as well rather than being kind of sharp uh, square edges as well on the end of each bristle okay so this has kind of been contoured this end so it's more comfortable when you're brushing as well okay we talked about the uh, the kind of shaping of the toothbrush but also the bobbles there as well is going to increase uh, grip further okay and then finally that little indicator panel there is quite hard to see but in there we've got that little red bit in that that middle there okay that's another feature on the toothbrushes that you see quite a lot that wears down when the toothbrush needs replacing so it's making sure again that uh, the product's going to be safe and it's going to be uh, comfortable uh, for the user to use as, as well as it being effectively uh, useful and function well okay so there we go that's a bit of an analysis of the uh, toothbrush there um, hope you kind of come up with the same sort of points but as I say if um, we go back to our first point there okay what we're basically doing is we want to reword the question and then what I'd suggest is mind map lots and lots of these points okay when you're mind mapping think about SEC wait a sec yeah safe easy to use comfortable think about statistics so we've got all of those um, words to do with the different senses and that word statistics makes up all those words in order and then consider using the point evidence explanation model and vary your use of connectives in any sort of uh, extended question and that will ensure that you get the maximum of the marks available in this case it's 12 marks so we're probably looking for at least six well explained points to be able to get full marks for this question good luck